Hello. Good evening. Good evening. How are y'all doing? It's good to see y'all. How's the week been? Thank you for the rose already. How cool. Thank you so much. What's up, y'all? Are y'all ready to do some dosage calculations? How's the week been? Um, my name is Nurse C. Hey, I am a blessed RN and I'm your friendly neighborhood registered nurse who loves dosage calculations. And yes, I do do individual. I always say that doo doo. I do provide individual <laughs> private tutoring. This is the website that's scrolling down here um, that you can um, look on for tutoring services, uh, both individual and group. Uh, groups up to four. So, you know, it could be effective. Too many people in the group, so yeah, it is just not going to work. But yeah, how y'all doing? Um, if this is your first time on, welcome. Welcome. I do free live review sessions and breakdowns on Wednesday nights and Sunday nights. Um, I like to use dimensional analysis to break down my problems, but if we need to break it down another way and see how we can solve it that way, I am open to it. So first things first, what kind of program are you in? LPN, RN, Associates, Bachelors, Accelerated Bachelors. Oh my God, thank you because I need help in med search. Whoop, scoop, scoop. Hold on. <laughs> Don't do med search. Dosage calculations is my baby, okay? <laughs> so I do, Nurse Bree, and she's on um, in the chat. She does, um, she's in a stellar, stellar young lady, super duper smart. She's in school for her DMP, but she offers um, individual tutoring with med surge, patho, anatomy, physiology, all of those other nursing um, topics and subjects because, yeah, I just do the math. Farm technician, okay. I, you know, I was a farm tech before I was a nurse. Accelerated BSN, ADN, LPN student. Okay, cool beans. Thank y'all for coming on. Um, have you been here before? If you have not been here before, I need to lay some ground rules. We, this is a no fear zone. Don't come in these comments talking about I'm scared. I'm afraid. Mm -mm, not here. We're just uncertain and we're unsure. And we're going to come to get some clarity and break it down, okay? So that's my only rule, but, um, you know, no question is crazy or unwelcome. Just add it to the comments to the side. Um, Nurse Bree, she is one of the moderators, so hopefully she can um, help um, keep up with the questions if I don't see them because sometimes y'all go fast. Y'all be cutting up in here, but I love it. Um, so, yeah, let's get to it. Hey, Whitney, congratulations on your test. Um, take, take my prereqs for nursing. Okay, Kima, cool. Cool, cool, cool. All righty, y'all. So what are we doing tonight? Dimensional analysis or, um, ratio and proportion, formulas, desire. What are we doing? Let me know in the comments and I'm gonna try to get this pulled up. So y'all know I am in Alabama. I am on central time. Where is everybody else uh, tuning in from? Y'all let me know. I passed my HESI. Yes, you prayed for me and I passed. Yay, that is so awesome. I know that is a huge weight that has been lifted. Oh, man. Eyes and O's. Bob Beach, two up, two down, 757. I used to live there. Well, not there. I used to live in Norfolk. <laughs> but, um... <laughs> <laughs> my dad was in the military so yes spent a long time in um virginia how cool is that hampton roads new york okay oh it's cold there it's cold that real military okay cool yeah everybody in the 757 um area is usually military now i wouldn't be opposed to moving back there but mm, my folks is here you know what i'm saying i used to love virginia loved it loved it loved it 
All right, let's see if we can get this to looking decent and in order. Dallas. Okay, I heard that place is really cool. Associate student here, South Carolina. Happy I'm here, so I'm happy I ran into your live. Yes. Okay, cool. Cool beans. Awesome. Well, after after we study, we do nurse chat. Um, I know I see a lot of time on um socials that, you know, we get into nursing school and don't really understand like the difference between associates and bachelors and LPN versus RN, the different specialties, what to expect, a uh, pay rate, all kind of different stuff. So I just opened myself up in my career and my knowledge, my experience <laughs> to kind of answer those questions as best as I can. So if you want to hang around after we do these problems and have nurse chat, then cool beans. If not, I know it's going to be late, but hey, I'm just here for the students. Okay, Chicago. Yep, it's cold up there too. Nope, 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 nope. Mm -mm. Cold and windy. My um husband was trying to get me to go to Chicago because he likes hockey. And I'm like, you, you must not know me. I do not like the cold. It was like 50 degrees here in Birmingham. So I was excited for today. All right, so here we go. 50 milliliters equals how many teaspoons? So when I do uh, my conversions or I do any kind of problem, I like to put my references on the side. So, and then the rules for dimensional analysis, everything on the top it has to cross out with what's on the bottom. Label your units, okay? Label your units. The power is in the units because whatever is on top has to be on the bottom and cross out. And um, I start with what I'm looking for. A lot of people say, do you have to? No, you ain't got to do nothing but just live and die, okay? But it makes it easier for you to see what you already have and know that everything else needs to cross out. And it kind of comes systematically just in case you have like um, going from metric to household where you have to like have ounces, cups, and milliliters. Um, you know, that's like three different conversions. So that will help with that. Hey, Risa, how you doing? All right. So we know that one teaspoon is five milliliters. Okay. So we're looking for teaspoon. I'm going to start with teaspoon, right? So one teaspoon over five mLs. And then we'll put what we have on the top. So it's 50 milliliters over one. Your milliliters cross out. Five divided by, I'm sorry, 50 divided by five is going to be 10 teaspoons. Simple enough. I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. Hey, what's going on here? Uh, okay. What's going on here? What is going on here, baby? <laughs> okay. It was at the end already. Okay, you're providing home care for a patient who needs to mix her oral powdered medication with 120 ml of water or juice. She has only standard measuring cups in the house. How many cups do you instruct her to use to take her dose? So this one is um um just a, a conversion problem. It's just got a little bit more words to it, right? Yeah. Okay, so we have 100 20 mls of juice that she needs and we need to convert it to cups okay so we know that there are 30 milliliters in one ounce and eight ounces in one cup i don't like how this is writing hmm hmm Let's see. Let's let's change that up a bit. Okay. All right. So then if we are looking for cups, we're going to start with cups. Okay. So one cup. I don't like how that right either. So I'm trying something different tonight. Um, I'm just going to do this one. Yeah. Um, one cup is eight ounces. And then we have ounces on the bottom. <clears throat> so that means we need ounces on the top. Right. So one ounce is 30 milliliters ounces has crossed out now we have 30 milliliters on the bottom we need milliliters on the top so we'll take this our 120 milliliters put it over one milliliters has crossed out and we have what we're looking for which is cups so 120 divided by 8 divided by 30 
And that's going to be 0 0.5 cups. Okay. So um, while we're here and we just did this problem, you see all the values. Ooh, first of all, you can't see that. Why y'all ain't tell me nothing? Okay. Let's scoot that up a little bit. And then we'll make this disappear or say disappear, like my baby say. And then we'll put that right there. Ha ha. Okay, now we can see some stuff. So the calculator trick. Have you ever had a problem where it was like in the millions and then you wrote down that long number and you wrote down the bottom long number and you put it in your calculator and you got the problem wrong because you didn't enter it right in the calculator? We're going to keep everything in the calculator until that's it. That's the end. So that um that goes to my philosophy. The more steps that you take, the more mistakes that you're liable to make. So, therefore, you will go all the way across the top. So, you do 1 times 1 times 120. You don't have to include the ones, but just for all intents and purposes, I'm going to show you. And then, once you get to that top line, I mean, that top number, that last number on the top line, get it together, see? Hit divide. Don't hit equals. So, then, now, everything on the bottom, you're going to enter in and hit divide afterwards as well. So, 8 divide. 30 divide 1. Now I don't got, I've gotten to the 1, I can hit equals and that's going to give me my answer. And I didn't have to write anything down. I didn't have to go, you know, to the top and then calculate to the bottom, then put the top and the bottom and then hit equals. See? I'm trying to make it as simple as possible. All right. A patient on hemodialysis is ordered a fluid restriction of 1,000 mLs a day. He must maintain careful intake and output. For breakfast, he had one cup of coffee. For lunch, he drank six ounces of lemonade and ate one cup of soup. For supper, he drank one cup of coffee. He took his morning and evening pills with four ounces of water each time. Has he stayed with his 1,000 milliliter uh, fluid restriction? Let us see. So, he had, for breakfast, one cup of coffee. So, I'm going to always write what I'm working with. So, one cup equals, what, eight ounces. And then one ounce is 30 mLs. So, this is in mLs. So, everything that has he has consumed that was liquid at room temperature has to be changed to milliliter. Okay? So, if he had... One cup of coffee. We need to know how many milliliters that is, right? So we'll start with milliliters. 30 mLs over one ounce. Then ounces at the bottom. We'll put eight ounces over one cup. Then he had one cup of coffee over one. Ounces cross out, cups cross out. And now we have, what, 30 times eight, which is 240. So 240. Then he also had, for lunch, he had six ounces of lemonade. So one ounce is 30 mLs. Six times 30 is going to be 180. So that's the lemonade. And then he had a cup of soup. We already just figured out a cup. So we could just put that same 240. Boom. Okay. For supper, he also drank a cup of coffee. So another 240 mLs. And then with his morning and evening pills, he had eight ounces of water each time that he took it. So, no, sorry, not eight ounces, four, which is going to be eight ounces. So four ounces times 30 is 120. So another 240 because he had eight ounces, right? So 240 plus 240, basically 240 times four. <laughs> Plus 180 is going to be 1,140 milliliters. This is a very non-compliant dialysis patient. And he's going to come in fluid volume overloaded, can't breathe, electrolytes all off, and he's going to have to get dialyzed. And these are the type of pa uh, patients I used to take care of. Right now I'm on the ortho floor, which is different, but I like it. All right. so. Anybody have any questions so far? We're just doing a little simple stuff and then we get into the hard stuff, okay? A. Hey. All right, a patient must take 200,000 units of a drug by mouth every four hours. Swish. 
So this probably is, you're welcome. Hey, Cassie. All right. It is available as 100,000 units per five mLs. The patient has only household measuring spoons. How many teaspoons should the patient be in, uh, instructed to take? So we are looking for, our goal is teaspoons, right? So we know that mm, 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 one teaspoon equals five milliliters, right? So we're looking for teaspoons. We're going to start with teaspoons. I also like to start um, with writing on the side my relationships because dimensional analysis is all about relationships. People think that you have to be good at math to be good at dosage calculations. That is complete and utter lie. If you can multiply, you can divide, you can subtract, and you can add, you're going to be good at dosage calculations. This right here is just solving a puzzle, okay? so. If I'm looking for teaspoons, I'm going to start with teaspoons. But look, it says that we have 200,000 units that's ordered. And our medicine comes as 100,000 units per 5 ml. So I like to start with what it is that I am looking for. Okay. So if I'm looking for teaspoons, I'm going to start with my teaspoons. So one teaspoon over five milliliter. I got milliliters at the bottom, so I want milliliters at the top. So five ml over a hundred thousand units. I got that from right here. In dimensional analysis, you can flip flop these to however you need it to fit. We're gonna do a microgram per kilogram per minute problem. And so you'll see that we just want micrograms per kilogram and minutes on the bottom. So we have to flip flop that stuff sometimes. As long as you put what's on top and what's on bottom and the units um, cross out, you're good, okay? So you are allowed to flip flop. All right, milliliters crossed out. Cross out your units as you go along because remember the units is where the sauce is, okay? So now we got units on the bottom and we need units on the top. So we'll use this. And you see this? This was just plain by itself, right? It was just single. So it's not in a relationship. So 200,000 units. And I'm going to put it over one. So units cross out. And now we are left with teaspoons, which is what we were looking for. Okay? So 5 times 200,000 divided by 5 divided by 100,000 is going to be two teaspoons, okay? Does that make sense to everybody, how I use dimensional analysis to set this problem up to solve it? She said, yes, please do that one next. I don't know where it's at, Mimi, honestly. <laughs> it's somewhere in here. I don't know. All right. Another calculate the intake and output. So for eight hours, okay, we have two eight ounce cu cups of coffee that they drink. People love their coffee. Don't you know? I work at night. They wake up at three or four o'clock in the morning. You got some coffee ready? I'm like, ain't you supposed to be asleep? Like, bro, go to bed. All right. Anywho, so two eight ounce cups of coffee, four ounces of orange juice, three fourths cups of milk, eight ounces of chicken broth, four cups of ice. Two cups of water and a continuous infusion of normal saline at 50 milliliters an hour. Keep in mind that it is only for an eight hour shift, okay? So we'll put that in the back of our mind. So we'll go step by step and we'll figure out how much is each of these intakes in milliliters. Once we get all of our middle milliliters, oh, that word be giving me heck sometimes milliliters. <laughs> we'll add them all together, okay? So this one says two. Eight ounce cups of coffee. So that's going to be 16 ounces, isn't it? So remember, one cup. I don't like how this is writing. So I I mean, for real. Let's see. That that don't, that don't, mm-mm. <sighs> Let's see here. What about a brush pen? Nope, 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 nope. Well, we'll try that. I don't know. Pressure sensitivity, I don't know. All right, I do apologize. I don't like how this is writing. 
So I'm going to switch back to how I did the last time. Anywho. So one ounce equals 30 ml. And then there are eight ounces in one cup okay so we got 16 cups because i did two times 18 ounces because they had two eight ounces eight ounce cups of coffee so we're looking for milliliters i'm going to start with what i'm looking for 30 mls over one ounce then we got 16 i mean woo, ounces <laughs> It was one, I mean, oh my gosh, okay. 30 mLs equals one ounce. And then we got 16 ounces, okay? So that's going to give us 30 times 16, which is 480 milliliters, okay? So we'll put that on the side. So then the same with the four ounces of orange juice. 30 mL over one ounce times four ounces okay so you get how we're doing the setup so basically hey gorgeous <laughs> thank you how you doing she said oh lordy so that's 120 right so that's 120 then three-fourths cups of milk so this one i gotta write this one out and show you how to do it all righty so looky here looky here if we're looking for milliliters we'll start with milliliters 30 ml over one ounce then we've got eight ounces in one cup. Then we have three fourths cup that we, I don't like, I, oh my gosh, this is going to bother me the whole time. <sighs> cup. All right. So ounce crosses out, cups crosses out. We're left with milliliters. So 30 times eight times three divided by. 30 times 8 times 3 divided by 4 is going to be 180 milliliters. So that's 180 mLs right there. 8 ounces of chicken broth is going to be 8 times 30, which is 240. 4 cups of ice. Okay, listen, listen, listen. Ice doesn't stay ice, does it? It melts, doesn't it? So you have to count ice as half the amount that is given to you, okay? Yes, you got it. You got it. Everybody kind of like, well, I, I thought I had the answer right. Nope, you didn't have the ice. So instead of two cups of ice, you got to have, I mean, four cups of ice, you have two cups of ice. I keep giving away the answer. I hate if I was asking you what the, <laughs> what the answer was. Okay, so let's see. Two cups of ice. So one cup is eight ounces. So two cups is going to be 16 ounces. Then we have 16 ounces up here. So that's going to be what? 480 mLs, right? And then two cups of water. A cup of water is one. Oh, hold on. Yeah, the same thing. And then look here. This says 50 milliliters an hour. This is calculating for the eight hours that it is going so you have to do eight times 50 so is there 400 milliliters for your iv okay that's how you calculate the iv thing okay i took all my chemistries including organics and biochem and i never got told about ice <laughs> Because <laughs> you didn't go to nursing school yet. <laughs> Man, 480, 120, and 180, and 240, and 480, and 480, and 400. Boom. So I got, no, don't feel dumb. Nursing is different. Like if you've never taken nursing before, it you might you really might feel dumb. You think that what's on TV is like in real life how it works, and it's not. It's its own science. Like all my degrees is like a science of nursing. Like so, you have to you have to get used to it. I know it's very cliche how people say you have to learn to think like a nurse, but you honestly have to forget what you thought, and you have to learn to think like a nurse because it's very different. So don't feel dumb. 
All right. So 12 pounds and 12 ounces. Somebody had a little baby. That's a big baby. And <laughs> I'm like, ooh, it's 12 pounder. So how many um, kilograms is this? You're going to have to convert this to pounds first, all of it to pounds, then kilograms. So the ounce part is what we'll have to change. So we know that there are 16 ounces in one pound okay so if we're looking for pounds we'll start with pounds so one pound is 16 ounces we have 12 ounces that we want to convert to pounds so 12 divided by 16 is 0 0.75 so we'll add that to the 12 okay so it'll be 12.75 pounds now we can do kilograms so we know that one kg is 2.2 pounds. Know it, love it, eat it. All right. So one kilogram, because that's what we're looking for, 2.2 pounds. And then we'll multiply by 12.75 pounds over one. So that'd be 12.75 divided by 2.2 is... 5.79 kgs. How do they have y'all rounding in your program? Do you round to the nearest tenth, to the hundredth? Um, how do they let you round? Because somebody I was um tutoring, they had all the numbers behind it. And I was like, what? And I was like, you don't even like those numbers are so minuscule and unimportant, but I guess all numbers matter. Whatever. Okay. All right, so if you are liking this live session, throw some hearts out there for me. Let's get some more um, nursing students caught on to through the algorithm. I appreciate it. Um, let's do some more. Mm, we can pass those because I think we've done enough metric conversions, enough easy stuff. Let's get into a little bit harder stuff. So this is percent solution, right? Mm hmm. I did one of these, I think, was it last Sunday? or Wednesday, I can't remember, but y'all keep asking for more, so hey, here we go. I go live on Sunday nights and Wednesday nights. I was thinking about changing it to Mondays, but I don't know. What do y'all feel about that? I felt that Sunday nights is like the start of the week, and you know, you get your studying in, then you go to school on Monday, Tuesday, then you come on Wednesday, and you're like, hey, do these, do these, do these. <laughs> so yeah, give me some feedback. Let me know. All right, so this is called a percent solution, okay? So it is going to be the percent in grams over 100 milliliters, okay? So check this. Anything over 100 is a percent, right? Because that's what percent means, per 100. So if you look at this probably initially, you probably think, I don't have enough information to solve this. There's no drug concentration. Like, how, how, what am I going to do? Like, I'm going to skip it. I'm going to write some numbers in the end. Hey, you passed. Awesome. Congratulations. I love it. Yay. Okay. So, here we go. The order is for 450 milligrams. I am once. You have drug X 15%. How many mLs are we going to administer to the patient? So remember, our percent solution is the percent grams over 100 milliliters. So this is going to be 15 grams per 100 mL. So if we look at our drug order, it is in milligrams, okay? So isn't 15 grams the same as 15,000 milligrams? Because isn't one gram 1,000 milligrams? We'll still keep it over 100. We just simply converted our grams to milligrams, okay? So now we can figure out our drug concentration by dividing the top by the bottom. So 15,000 divided by 100 is going to equal 150 milligrams per milliliter. Now this is something that we can work with, can't we? Yo, you just blew my mind. That's that what the percent mean? Yes, 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 yes. Mind blown. I love it. I love it. Okay, so, okay, now you made me squirrel. <laughs> now we can see what we have, what we desire. You know, you do desire over have. You can do that here. Uh, ratio of proportion, you can do that here. Um, whatever, okay? So then 
What else do we have now? All right. We are looking for milliliters. That's our goal. So ML over 150 milligrams times 450 mg's. We got that from our problem. Milligrams process out. You're left with um, milliliter 450 divided by 150. It should be three. I always like double check because even when I do simple calculations, I'm like, hmm, that don't look right. So then you would give your patient three milliliters, okay? I know I probably lost some folks, so let me look at what y'all saying, honey. Let me see, let me see. <laughs> All right. They only gave us two tries to get on uh, 100. Oh, wow. Where did I get the 15 uh, grams from? Okay, so remember I said this is percent solution. It is the percent of gram in grams over 100 ml. So our drug was 15%. So I just took the percent sign off and put grams. So then our um, order required milligrams. So I just simply changed grams to milligrams by multiplying it by 1000. <laughs> just say, yes, I'm in the right place. <laughs> yeah, well, welcome. I'm glad you're here. Okay, Gracie, I just, um, I, I saw your, your comment, but then I just kind of, okay, where did the 100 milliliters come from? So percent solution is going to be this. This is always percent solution. So anything over 100 is your percentage, right? So it, just like you have 0.9% normal saline and they'll give you a bag of like 400 and they say, well, how much normal saline is it? You need to find how many grams. This is how you would do that as well, okay? When you go through the steps, it makes it seem so much easier. Heck yeah, because it's not that bad. You just got to know what you're doing and what you're looking for. So, you know, like I said before, you don't have to be a math genius to be good at dosage. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. You passed. Queen Ray. Awesome. That is so good. Um. All right. Do I need to go back over this one or are we good? Do, 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 do. Yes. Okay. I'm going to erase it and we'll go back. Okay. Dang. <laughs> I tried to preserve it. Uh, all right. She's it. <laughs> do it all that you can. So, okay. So we got our order. We got the drug and on the drug, it just says 15%, right? So we're looking for how many milliliters to get. This is called a percent solution problem. And that is always going to be your percent of the drug in grams over 100 milliliters. So isn't this that? Isn't this that? So that means that is, that's a percent. So anything that's over 100 is going to be your per cent. Cent, remember, centimeter, 100, centi. So per cent. So we will take what our drug is, the percentage of it, so 15, and we'll put it, the grams next to it, because it's always going to be grams over 100 mLs. Our medicine that is ordered is in milligrams. So if you convert grams to milligrams, you got to multiply it times 1,000, right? Or you move your decimal space three, uh, three places to the right. So might to slight, three places to the right, little large, three spaces to the left. That's how I kind of remember that one. If you don't want to do the long drawn out process of writing it as a dimensional analysis problem. So now that's 15,000 milligrams. It's the same thing. I kept my 100 ml because we're still talking about a percentage. So then you divide the top by the bottom and you get 150 milligrams per milliliter. We're used to seeing this format now because that's how we solve the rest of our problems, right? With the concentration of the drug. So then we're looking for mLs. I start with mLs, 150 milligrams, and then what's ordered is 450 milligrams. I put that over one. Milligrams has crossed out. I'm left with milliliters, and it's three mLs. 
Do I have any worksheets for micrograms per kilogram per minute? No, <laughs> I'm working on it. It takes, you know what, y'all, um, y'all be talking about y'all teachers, but for the people who come up with these problems, it takes a lot to come up with these problems. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you eat with these answers, but I just... <laughs> I can't get it. It's okay. It's okay. I'll do another one next time. I don't have another one. I just kind of like pop those in there because you don't really see a lot of these. They just pop up, you know, in conversation um, in like different forums. So I just try to include stuff that I see. Um, I need to include like some, um, what you call it, parental role and um, like TPN and all that stuff too. Because I think that's been popping up uh, as well. Um, so safe dose. 500 milligrams drug v IVPB. Oh, wait a minute. Okay. It was a whole bunch of comments. Let me stop. Let me stop. Let me stop. So 100% is always, mm -hmm. yes, ma'am, Cassie, percent is always over 100. Um, do, 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 do. Thank you. I'm happy you came across my live too. G, you want, one, 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 yay, maybe. <laughs> will this be available the next day? This will be available as soon as we get off of here tonight. It will be on my YouTube channel. So, oh my gosh, I didn't even mention that. I'm sorry. So the replays are on my YouTube channel, A Blessed RN. It's the same name as um, it is here and on Facebook. And I also have playlists that have um, different types of questions. And they're broken down either with dimensional analysis, um... Do, 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 do. Desired over half or ratio and proportion. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to give you my disclaimer. My desire and my ratio playlist, they a little lacking because I favor dimensional because I feel like dimensional, you can solve everything, okay? Um, and it makes it easier. And my job is to help you make it easier because y'all need to come help me because I'm tired. I've been in this game almost 14 years. I'm tired. I'm tired. So <laughs> y'all need to pass and come on. But yeah, um, you can go on there and there are other resources. I'm working on worksheets. I'm working on workbooks. I'm working on all types of things. But you see this? I got another. I got a transport patients too, okay? <laughs> so I got two businesses going on and it's hard. But And I work as an RN. So give me some time and I'll come up with some more questions. Um... Mm, 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 mm. Keep it dimensional analysis. Okay. All righty. So, if, thank you. Is it on TikTok, Insta, or just Google it? Okay. She said, I think I said it. I think so. Okay. All right. So, back to the question now 500 milligrams drug uh, v IVPB every six hours for a patient who weighs 150 pounds. You know that you can safely administer up to. 40 milligrams per kilogram a day is the order safe okay so we are looking to see is this safe so we need to give this four times a day right because every six hours means that Six hours goes by, you give the drug. Six hours goes by. So 24 hours divided by six is four times a day, right? So in essence, they're going to be getting 2,000 milligrams a day, okay? We know that we can safely give 40 milligrams per kilogram a day. So we need to figure out what that is. So we will set it up as such. So we are looking for milligrams a day okay so if i'm looking for my milligrams i'm going to start with them on the top so 40 milligrams per kilogram per day and then we've got our patient's weight and it's in pounds so we'll do one kg over 2.2 pounds kgs cross out and now we have pounds at the bottom so we need pounds at the top 150 pounds over one we'll cross this out and now we're just left with milligrams on the top and day on the bottom okay so 40 times 150 divided by 2.2 is going to be 
727.27 milligrams a day. So if they can get up to this amount, is this a safe dose? So this is the most you can safely give up to. This is the most. So the most that they can receive. We determined that the doctor, well, the doctor told us we need to give 500 every six hours, which means 500 times four, which was 2,000. Is this safe? It's safe. It is safe. It says that we can give up to. Now, if he had ordered 3,000 um, milligrams per day, then that would have been too much because this is the limit. That right there, this right here, this right here is the limit, okay? So it's safe. It's safe. This is different from like a safe dose range where you have a lower limit and you have an upper limit. And so like the lower limit is the, the lowest and the upper limit is the most. And you kind of have that space in between that it falls in between. But this says you can give up to. You have to look at the wording. Up to 40 milligrams per kilogram per day. So that is. Okay, so Dwanya, this is not. This is the limit. That's not the ordered dose. We're checking to see is what the doctor ordered safe. As long as it doesn't go over 27, 27, it's okay. Does that make sense? Okay. Per day. So no more. Yeah, no more. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, okay, okay. All right, all right. We, 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 we all together now. All right. A patient is to receive 250 mLs of normal saline over four hours. The tubing has a drip factor of 10 drops per mL. How many drops per minute should be delivered? So you can give an IV two ways. You can give an IV in a pump, um, which is electricity. So you pump your numbers in, do, 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 and then it goes milliliter per hour. And then you can give it via gravity. Gravity is going to be drip, 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 drip in a little drop chamber. In the gravity problems, you usually have a drop factor. What a drop factor is, is when you see that drop, that drip chamber that you squeeze to put the medicine in before you prime the line and you see how it drips, drips, drips. A drop factor is how many drops in that um, drip chamber it takes to administer one ml of fluid. That's all a drop factor is, okay? So when you see that in a problem, automatically thing up oh, drops per um, per minute. If you see pump, pump, IV pump, infusion pump, um, flow rate, and it doesn't have um, a drop factor in it, automatically think milliliter per hour either way it goes it's going to be volume how much we're giving the patient over time how long it'll take to infuse okay so volume over time so that's what I want y'all to keep in your head when you see these IV problems because a lot of times they add the um, ordered dose of the medicine with grams and milligrams and units and all kind of stuff in there. And you're like, what do I pull from? Nothing. That's just fluff. It's fliggity, fliggity, frag, nabbit, fluff. We want to know how much over how long. So volume over time. Okay. So our goal right here is how many drops per minute okay so our factors are remember we got to look for our relationships al green let's stay together keep them together 250 mls is to go over four hours and then we have a drop factor of 10 drops per ml if i am looking for my drops i am going to start with my drops first so that's going to be 10 drops per ml then we will have milliliters at the bottom, so we need milliliters at the top. We've used this, so now we can use our 250 ml over four hours. Milliliters has crossed out. Now looky here, we have drops on the top, which is part of our goal, but then we need minutes on the bottom. We have hours, so we'll put our hours on the top, our minutes on the bottom. One hour is 60 minutes, hours crossed out, and now we are at goal, okay? 
So now we can put it in our calculator. So 10 times 250 divided by 4 divided by 60. And that is going to be 10.41. And these problems like this with um, drops, you ain't never went in your kitchen and saw a drop just say, oh, that's a half a drop. It's either one drop or it's not a drop. So these you will have to round to the nearest whole number, okay? So if it is, looking at the tens place, if it's four and below, you keep it at that same number. If it is five and above, you round up. So this is 0.4, so we'll keep it at 10 drops per minute. Does that make sense to everybody? Everybody. Will you feet and feel united? Oh, aesthetically. Okay, where we need to back it up from? No, you're not dumb. Please don't say that. Don't say that. You make it look so easy and I get here. <laughs> and I get it here, but then I see the problem effort. So it just takes um it just takes practice. Um doing it every time the same way and you know, re repeating it and knowing what to pull out. So as you do them, do them the same way. Like I said, you don't have to do anything unless you want to do it. But I highly suggest that you start with what you're looking for because it makes it systematically easier to cross your units out and get your answer. Okay. All right. So levothyroxine, 150 micrograms by mouth per day is ordered for a patient. It is supplied as 0 0.075 milligrams gram tablets. How many tablets should the patient take daily? A safe dose is 1.5 micrograms per kilogram per day. The patient weighs 186 pounds. Is this dose safe? So this is like a three-parter. A three-parter. All right. So we'll answer the question. First, how many tablets should the patient take daily? So we are looking for tablets. That is our goal, right? So we know that we have 150 micrograms ordered, and then we have 0 0.075 milligram tablets, okay? So if we're looking for tablets, we'll start with tablets. So tab over 0 0.075 milligrams, and then we have milligrams at the bottom. You can't put micrograms on top of milligrams because that's not the same, right? You can't cross them out. So therefore, you have to insert a conversion. So because I have micrograms at the bottom, I'll put micrograms at the top. That's right. You convert. So my milligrams, I'm sorry, was at the bottom. I'll put milligrams at the top. I believe I said micrograms and I misspoke. I'm sorry. I don't want to confuse anybody. So my micrograms will go at the bottom. And so here... We will put the one by the biggest unit of measure because one cookie is made up of a thousand little crumbs. Okay, so one milligram is 1000 micrograms. Cross your milligrams out. Now we have micrograms at the bottom, don't we? So therefore, we can. I think I messed this problem up, but hey, we'll go with it. <laughs> See what I'm saying? Oh man, so 150 divided by 0 0.075 divided by 1000. No, I didn't. I didn't mess it up. Okay, here it is. So that is going to be two tabs. All right. I was like, did I mess this up? I've messed it up before trying to be smart with my micrograms and my milligrams, and I got confused. So that's how you do that part, okay? So it says that a safe dose is 1.5 micrograms per kilogram per day. And the patient weighs 186 pounds. So the most that they can have is that. And we're trying to see, is it a safe dose? So we'll do 1.5 micrograms per kg per day. Our patient's weight is in pounds, so we'll do 1 kg over 2.2 pounds because we had kilograms at the bottom. We'll need kilograms at the top. We got pounds at the bottom. We need pounds at the top. 186 pounds is our patient's weight, and then it says microgram per day. So 1.5 times 186 divided by 2.2. 126.8. Micrograms a day is the most that this patient can have. 
So, is this a safe dose? Oh shoot, I see some I see some back and forth. I see some back and forth. I see some no's and I see some yeses. Okay, what do we got? What do we got? All right, so let me explain. This is not safe because this is this is the most that they can have. Okay? That when you do this problem right here, this part of the problem is your safeguard. That is your limit, okay? So when you have um, safe dose range problems, you want to see what can you safely give? What is the standard? What is your limit? This means that that is the most they can have, period, sis, okay? <laughs> what has been ordered by the doctor is that. So 150 is greater than 126. Yep. So it's not safe. Yeah. Y'all trying to put this folks in some thyroid crises and all kinds of stuff. All right. Drug A. Um, one gram. <laughs> I be piggyback every eight hours. The pharmacy supplies drug A and 100 mLs of D, um, D5W. You need to infuse it over 30 minutes with a drop factor of 10 drops per mL. What drip rate will you set? Now, look at here, look at here. Okay, remember when I was just telling you about IVs and flow rates and stuff? We need to know how much. Over how long? So when you look at this, ignore the heck out of this. We want the volume over how long, the time, okay? That's what you look at. It didn't say nothing about how many micrograms, how many milligrams, how many doo doo doots. It didn't say none of that. We want to know how much over how long. So volume over time. So then we have our, our drop rate, and we want to know how many drops per minute, okay? So 100 mLs is to be given over 30 minutes. And you have a drop factor of 10 drops per mL. We are looking for drops, so we're going to start with our drops. So 10 GTT over mL. We got milliliters at the bottom, so we'll put our milliliters at the top. 100 milliliters over 30 minutes. And so now milliliters crossed out. And then some people might want to go on. Well, oh, I know I have to times it by 60 for what? For what? You are at goal. Drops are on the top. Minutes on the bottom. Don't give it more and don't give it less. Okay. So let me answer your question about the eight hours. So in a drug order, you're going to have the name of the drug, the strength of the drug, the route, and the frequency. That eight hours is part of how many times you would give this drug, not how long they want it to infuse over. Does that make sense? That's part of your frequency, not the rate. We want to know how much of the, um, how much milliliter, liter, however many um, units of, of measure for volume is going to go over time. How many minutes, how many hours, okay? This one gave us the minutes. It didn't give us hours. So that's, therefore, when we set it up, we just stop right there. Does that make sense about why we didn't use the eight? Pay attention to the one gram and the piggyback and all that other fluff that they tried to give us. Cherie, thank you for the rose. I appreciate it. All right. So all of that is just ops of freaking leap. <laughs> so that's why I'm going to blank it out. All right. So 10 times 100 divided by 30 is going to be... 33.3 repeating. So we will round this to 33 drops per minute because the three is, um, that 0.3 makes it, um, keep, keeps it at the same number. Okay. Yep. It's just 33. You're well. Okay. So regular insulin, 17 units per hour IV available. Regular insulin, 150 units and 150 mLs normal saline. How many milliliters per hour will the nurse set the pump? Okay, so we are looking for a goal of milliliters on the top 
and hours on the bottom. We have an order for 17 units an hour. And our medicine is 150 units of insulin and 150 units of normal saline. So we are looking for milliliters. So I'm going to start with my milliliters on the top. The first thing. All right. 150 ml over 150 units. Uh-oh. Remember, you can flip-flop them, okay? To however you need it to fit your puzzle. We're not even doing math right now. We're just lining stuff up and crossing it out. It's that simple, and you can do it too, okay? All right. So we use that relationship. Now we got units on the bottom, so we need our units on the top. So we'll do our 17 units over an hour, and our units have crossed out. And now look here. We are at goal. Milliliter on the top. Hour on the bottom. Don't go anymore. All right. So then we'll do 150 times 17 divided by 150, which is going to be 17 mLs per hour. Okay. If this live session of Dosage Calculation review and breakdown is benefiting you, let me get some likes out into this algorithm. Please and thank you. If you have joined me later on in the session, hey, I'm Nurse C. I'm a registered nurse. I have my BSN. I've been a nurse for almost 14 years now, come March. And I just like to do um, dosage calculations. Um, if you would like to review this session and other sessions of Work It Out Wednesday or Study Buddy Sunday, you can go on my YouTube channel, A Blessed RN. Um, it's the same handle and there are playlists with um, different types of problems broken down via dimensional analysis, ratio, proportion, and desired over half. So I appreciate it. All right. So a provider. <laughs> Lord, how many syllables? Um, I need to get out of Alabama. Where are y'all from? Come invite me. Except for anywhere that's really cold right now. I ain't going up north. <laughs> a provider has ordered 600 milligrams of drug tea. I am every hour. Okay. The directions for reconstitution on the two gram vial reads reconstitute with 4.8 ml of sterile water to obtain a concentration of 400 milligrams per ml. How many milliliters will you administer per dose? Okay. Listen here. Listen here. Listen here. Okay. Don't let these reconstitution problems hem you up. Concentrate on the concentration. This doesn't matter. This doesn't matter. We want this part right here. And that's how you defeat all of your reconstitution problems. You look for the final concentration, okay? All right. So we are looking for a goal of milliliter. Per dose, right? So we have our medicine, which is 400 milligrams per ml. So I'll put my milliliter on the top. And then we have 600 milligrams ordered per dose. And our milligrams are gone. And we have milliliters per dose. So 600 divided by 400 is going to be 1.5 milliliters per dose. All right, let me see. Oh my gosh, yes. Hey. Oh, <laughs> uh, thank you for the love. I appreciate it. Okay, is it okay if I tell my other classmates about you? Heck yeah. Come on, tell everybody. You can tell everybody. You can tell everybody. All right. I know Dosage Calc has a lot of people hemmed up. So yes, come on. Come on. Come on. Come one, come all. Hey, Bree. <laughs> <laughs> is the equation always ML over dose? M not always, Denisha. Um, you have to look and see. Um, <laughs> Y'all are so funny. You have to see what the question is asking you. Sometimes it says how many milliliters per day, how many milligrams per day, how many micrograms per dose. You know, you just have to go by what the question is asking you for specifically. And don't give it any less. Don't give it any more. Okay. Um, okay. A client who weighs, oh, here it go. Here it go. Here it go. Here it go. Okay. I'm excited about these. If you haven't been in before, I love the weight based programs. Okay. <laughs> All right. So listen here, 
these don't need to freak you out. The same way that we have been doing like dimensional analysis and setting them up as a puzzle, it's the same way we are going to do this what might seem as a hard problem, okay? So let's read it. A client who weighs 84 kilograms is receiving an infusion of drug in uh, 50 milligrams in D5W, 250 milliliters at 60 milliliters per hour. How many microgram per kilogram per minute is the client receiving? Okay, so step one, find your goal. So we are looking for microgram over kilogram slash minute, okay? And then we're gonna write out our relationships to the side. So we have our patient's weight, which is 84 kilograms, is by itself, it's single, right? And then our medicine is 50 mg's and 250 ml's, and it's going at 60 ml's per hour, all right? So now we have to find micrograms on the top and kilograms and minutes on the bottom. Note, kilograms and minutes don't need to necessarily be side by side. They just got to be on the bottom, okay? So if we are looking for micrograms, what are we starting with? I'll wait. Because I want y'all to walk me through. Micrograms, right? We don't have any micrograms. So what we gonna do? We still gonna start with them, <laughs> okay? So listen, if we don't have any micrograms, we got milligrams, right? So that means that we can convert. So, all right, I'm gonna try my best to write the smallest that I can because it has been my misfortune that I run out of space every time. Okay, so if we're starting with micrograms, but we have mil milligrams, we'll do microgram at the top and milligrams at the bottom. So one milligram is 1000 mics, right? Now we got milligram at the bottom, so we can put milligram at the top. So 50 milligrams over 250 mLs. Milligrams is now gone. Now we have milliliters at the bottom, okay? So we can put our milliliters at the top. So that's that 60 mLs over an hour. All right, now we got hour at the bottom and we need kilogram and minutes at the bottom, don't we? Mm-hmm. So look at here, look at here. If we got hour at the bottom, we're gonna put it at the top. And then we'll put our minutes at the bottom. So one hour is 60 minutes. Hour is now gone. So now we got microgram at the top. We got minutes at the bottom. And what else do we need? We need kilograms to be at the bottom. So our patient's weight is already in kilograms. And don't we put... Um, whatever it is that's single over one, well, guess what? It's dimensional analysis, so we can flip-flop relationships. So we can put one over 84 kgs. And now we have micrograms at the top, minutes at the bottom, and kilograms at the bottom as well. Whoop, whoop. All right, 1,000 times 50 times 60. Does one times one. I don't like to put the ones in, but if you want to, hey, you can. Divided by 250, divided by 60, divided by 84. And that is going to be 2.3 micrograms per kilogram per minute. All right, let me, I'm scared to go to the comments. Let me see, Chad, let me see. <laughs> so let's see convert milligrams to micrograms that's all right Kima said she lost okay Kima did we did we get you back let's see I need you to tutor me I sure will you can go to abrntutoring.com I honestly don't know if I've ever had a question like this in nursing school ah um some people do some people don't you are super quick oh no okay well I'll do it again I can slow it down is that 1,000 milligrams written? Yes, micrograms written. Yes, it is. My blood pressure just plummeted. Well, they were receiving drug in, which was probably not nitro <laughs> All right, let me go back, okay? I'll slow it down. I'll slow it down. Okay, 
So what? Okay, I'm gonna write our relationships at the top. Um, so we do eighty four kgs and fifty milligrams per two hundred fifty ml, and then we have it going at sixty mLs per hour, right? So we said we were looking for micrograms. So we started with micrograms and our order, well, our available medicine is in milligrams. So therefore I started with my micrograms still at the top and first because that's what I needed, but I just went ahead and did a conversion. So that's 1000 micrograms over one milligram. Now that I have milligram at the bottom, I'm gonna put my milligrams at the top like we've been doing, okay? So 50 milligrams over 250 mLs. Milligrams has now crossed out. We have milliliters at the bottom now. We know that's not part of our goal, so they got to go. So we've used this, so now we can use our 60 milliliters per hour that it's infusing at. It. Milliliters has now been crossed out. We have hours at the bottom, but we need minutes at the bottom. So we'll throw our hours at the top. So it'll cross out and put our minutes at the bottom. One hour is 60 minutes. Hour is now gone. So let's look what we have. We have micrograms on the top, which is part of our goal. We've got minutes on the bottom, which is part of our goal. And then we need kilograms. So we'll put our patient's weight at the bottom that's already in kilograms. So one over 84 kgs. And now we have microgram on the top, kilograms and minutes at the bottom. You stop right there and you'll multiply all of your values across the top. So 1000 times 50 times 60. And you can add the ones if you want to. They don't make a difference. So I don't. Divide it by 250. Divided by 60, divided by 84, and that's 2.38. So 2.38 or 2.4 if you round microgram per kg per minute. All right. Did I did we did we did we gain some people who we kind who I kind of lost? Does does this make sense now? <clears throat> excuse me oh it's microgram per kilogram per minute i missed that part i assume milliliter to start with but it must be microgram yes ma'am okay this is a good problem basically you're converting until you reach your goal mm -hmm. that's the name of the game and like i said it's not even math this is just solving a, a puzzle what's what's lining up with what's lining up until you get to what it is that you're looking for in your goal that's why i say it, it don't have to be hard it does not have to be hard. You can solve any dosage calculations problem this way. As long as you have what it is that you're looking for and the relationships that it gives to you in the problem. Okay. Um, you're welcome, Mimi. Love your explanations. Thank you, Fernanda. Yes. <laughs> you're welcome. This is exactly how I do dosage calculations. Cool beans. I learned some of this in chemistry. Yeah. That's where you get uh, stoichiometry. Why is the one over 84 kilograms able to be at the end? Because we want our kilograms at the bottom. So anything over one is itself, right? So 84 wasn't in a relationship. It was just the patient's weight. Um, so we were able to flip flop that, put the one at the top and the 84 at the bottom so that your kilograms are at the bottom as well as your minutes. Okay. Um... Is it an easier way to do this? It This is the easy way. Now, if I show you <laughs> the other way, you would be so, so, so lost. I promise you. This So this is this is what I need. Dimensional analysis had me nervous. And I know dimensional analysis is different. And if it's not taught or where you can understand it, it's just kind of, it's just too much. Because you'll look at all this long line of numbers and units and you just like, you know what, bump that. So, <laughs> you know, I, I just really like to, you know, I like to convert. 
people. I'm like, you like desire, you like ratio. Because honestly, when I was in school, I hated dimensional analysis. I was a pharmacy technician and I hated um, dimensional analysis. It wasn't until I started really tutoring and doing these videos and I came up with the method of starting what you're looking for and the relationships. And I was like, this makes so much sense. And it's not even math. You know what I'm saying? It's just lining up stuff, multiplying and dividing. So, you know, I vouch for dimensional analysis and I push for it all day long. Um, how do you know what to put at the bottom or put at the top? So initially, remember we looked at our problem and it says microgram per kilogram per minute. So I wrote that out as my goal. So when you have those three different sets of relationships um, written out like that, you always put that first um that first unit at the top and then your other two at the bottom. And so we know that we needed micrograms at the top, kilograms and minutes at the bottom. I started with um, what I was looking for, which was micrograms. Our drug was in milligrams, but you can convert a milligram to a microgram. So that's what we did. So if you start with what you're looking for, you ain't got to go find it. That's exactly why I do it the same way, the same time. I mean, every time. So that it's the same way and you can't help but to cross out with what's on the bottom because they just naturally fall in place. You got milligrams at the bottom. You need milligrams at the top. You got uh, milliliters at the bottom. You see how it just lines up and you just crossing out and just crossing out. Okay. Um, do, 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 do. Let's see here. You got me wanting to go to nursing school. Come on. We are short staff. Come on. What did you multiply at the end, Marcella? I multiplied all of my numbers across the top in my calculator, and then I hit divide, and then I do all my numbers in at the bottom, and I hit divide in between each number. So I did all the way at the top, multiply, then divide 250, divide 60, divide 84. Because if you put that number in, you get like 3 million. So what if you miss a zero? You set up this problem magnificently and then you get it wrong because you put you um you put it in a calculator and you missed a zero or something so that's why i show you the calculator trick so that you know we can get all of our points because we pass in nursing school in 2024 amen amen well all right all the numbers okay somebody actually answered it for me i didn't see the comment i'm sorry the computers actually converted for us but it's always good to know yeah you're right can I do another problem like this on Sunday? Because <laughs> I don't have another one that I haven't um, written on that is not erased. You should do a problem with a double dosage amount. I don't like those, Jen, because I really am trying to figure out like how you would do that. Because, I mean, it makes sense to me in real life, like Benicar or Losartan or something. And it's like, you know, you have those double amounts. Like, okay, you give two or you give half or whatever. But I'm, I really don't, I'm not sure about the mathematical way to set it up, to set it up, to show it. Um, 31 year uh, nurse and now I'm back as a student okay having to erase the old way in formulas yeah formulas I mean they take up memory in your brain you got so much other stuff that you have to learn in school so formulas and having to remember that was you have volume and time over minutes times the drop factor what if you don't put those 60 minutes what if you put one hour then your answer's wrong you know what you're doing but you just didn't put the minutes on there um, is she live on another app? Yes, I have um, the live going on on my YouTube right now. So once we're finished um, studying, um, I cut it off and then I do nurse chat where you can ask questions about nursing, nursing school, nursing practice, whatever. And um, the live replays are on there on their own individual playlist. Mm hmm. All right, and, and literally working on this now. Is there another method without using dimensional analysis? There is another method, but it is super duper, super duper duper long. I call it the Jill Scott way because you take a long walk around the park at the dark and spark conversation, verbulation, and all the other stuff she said with Asians on it. So do nurses do all this math on the floor? No, Andrew. <laughs> we don't. Have you done any? There are three factors. Um, not sure what you're asking me, Cherie. Okay, the stoichiometry. Nope, don't do it on the floor necessarily. Um, you might want to double check if your ICU because that's where you have like your critical drips and your titrations and stuff. But normally you just don't. Um, now I do double check my heparin because you know that's why I have it a lot. Um, and you know everybody's human, so. 
you know, you give too much or too little, you clot and, you know, have a stroke, heart attack, PE, or you can bleed out if you have too much. My YouTube name is a blessed RN, just like my TikTok handle um, on Facebook as well. Y'all, go like and subscribe and all that stuff. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> um, I'm going to work on those playlists, those um, desired playlists and those ratios. Because like I said, those those playlists are a little skimpy. I had been under the weather and like I sounded like a man. So I'm sounding back to my normal voice. I hate listening to myself go like playback already <laughs> like on this. So it's like I couldn't stand to like post a video and I sound like warmed up deaf. So, hey, um, any tips on how to memorize conversions? Um, <laughs> there is a video that is trending right now about tablespoons and teaspoons and ounces. That is to OJ the, the juice man. <laughs> I didn't think that that video would be shared that many times, but the crazy things I remember in my head, um, I can post some, I can post some study sheets that I have. So where to do titrations come into nursing? Is it like the acid base reactions like I did in chemistry? So titrating, it would, um, just come in like the drips, um, you in like heparin and, um, like, um, your your cardiac drips so that's when you know basically it kind of means different um things in nursing um you change the drip according to blood pressure and vital signs or from the apt or anti-10a factor with heparin that just means that you're changing it um in nursing terms okay so here is a one that is 415 mls remaining in the iv bag the iv is infusing at 75 milliliters how much long will the iv run express your answers in hours in minutos okay let's do it all right so we have 415 mls in the bag it's going at 75 mls an hour our goal is to figure out time. So we're going to be looking for hours, okay? Thank you for the heart, Ebony. I appreciate it. Um, Okay, so if we're looking for hours, I'm going to start with my hours. So hour over 75 ml times 415 milliliters, okay? Is my milliliters cross out with my milliliters, my milliliters, my milliliters, Lord, have mercy milliliters i struggle with that word sometimes and then i'm a little sleepy so let's see 5.53 hours now check check out my melody this part right here is your hours this part right here is your minutes we need to figure out exactly how many minutes is 0.53 so you will take everything after the decimal and multiply it times 60. so 0.53 times 60 and it's like three repeating you ain't got to put all those threes back there i usually just check the first two decimal spaces and that's enough if it's um if it's like a high enough decimal to round up you'll see so i got 31.8 so that'll be 32 minutes right so that's five hours and 32 minutes does that make sense how we did that <laughs> Because it said to um, express your answer in hours and minutes. Can you give a short explanation of how you started? Yes. So um, it told me that there was 415 mLs left. And it's infusing at this. So it says how much longer So will the IV run. So we're looking for time. And then it told us that we're going to have to um, express our answer in hours and minutes. So I knew that my goal was to be looking for how many hours, right? So if I was looking for hours, I was going to start with my hours. So I took this right here and I flip flopped it because you can flip flop things in dimensional analysis to fit what you need to have. Okay. So, uh, okay. I started with my hours on the top and my 75 milliliters on the bottom. My milliliters was on the bottom, so I needed my milliliters to go to the top to cross out. So I used my 415 mLs 
and I crossed out my milliliters and then I was just left with hours. When I got my answer, it was 5.53. If you don't know what 0.53 minutes is, then, I mean, because you had to express it in hours and minutes, then you were going to get it wrong. So therefore, I took everything behind the decimal and multiplied it by 60 because there are 60 minutes in an hour. And then I got 31.8, which I rounded it to 32 because it's almost at 32. So it's five hours and 32 minutes. Okay. I usually use a formula method and stuck on it and forgot how to do my dimensional analysis. Well, how do you forget how to do dimensional? <laughs> I would think that would be kind of backwards. Like if you knew how to do um, dimensional, like you would forget formulas. But it's like dimensional, you're just setting it up. <laughs> you know? I don't know. Anywho, the doctor orders a 500 ml bag of normal saline to be infused at 20 drops per minute. The drop factor is 10 drops per ml. You start the infusion at 12 o'clock noon. At what time will the infusion be complete? All right. So we are looking for time. So we're going to look for the hours. Okay. It says we have a 500 milliliter bag. It's going at 20 drops per minute. The drop factor is 10 drops per ml, okay? So, we are looking for hours. We don't have hours. She said when the bag is empty, Lord have mercy. <laughs> I wasn't ready for it, Margie. <laughs> oh, you got me tickled. Oh, my goodness. Okay, all right. <laughs> all right, okay, okay, okay. I'm not going to laugh at you today. Not going to laugh at you today. So we have hours. We don't have hours anywhere, but we can still put hours, right? So one hour is 60 minutes. We got minutes at the bottom. We need minutes at the top. <laughs> minute over 20 drops. Because I can use that right there. My minutes are now gone. Now I got drops on the bottom. I need drops on the top or whatever the Migos say. 10 drops over ML. Drops crossed out. Now I have milliliter and I can use this right here. Look at here, look at here. All right, milliliters crossed out and now I am left with hours. So we'll do 10 times 500. Whoa, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. Too many zeros. 500 divided by 60 <laughs> divided by 20. And then I got 4.16 repeating hours, okay? So we'll take everything behind the decimal, multiply it by 60. So 1 times 60 is going to be 9.996, so 10 minutes. So 4 hours and 10 minutes. So if we start this at 12 o'clock and we have 4 hours and 10 minutes, so this is going to be your minute column, this is going to be your hour column, right? It'll be done at 4.10. And that's when the bag is done. Devoy, my island friend. What's up, baby? Standing on business. <laughs> Standing on business and other things. <laughs> he going he gonna to graduate and take me to Jamaica. I got him on camera saying it. I got him on camera saying it. Okay, let's see. Dimensional analysis is confusing to me. Um, it does take a little bit of practice. Um, and if you keep your relationships and you write your units, when you're doing dimensional analysis, write your units because the numbers mean nothing. Okay, you mean you mean nothing numbers. Your sauce is in the units because we need to know what's going to be on the top and what's going to be on the bottom and what needs to cross out. Okay, so let's see here my other comments. Military time is not bad. All you have to do is just add 12 or subtract 12. Um, my problem is when the word problem gets too long, I start to zone out. I understand that too. Um, <laughs> I get confused about placements and how to set it up. A bad habit. Start with what you're looking for. Start with what you're looking for. Know that you can flip flop. And, and you, if you write your relationship to the side, you see me, I wrote, I, I wrote all of that to the side. I seen the problem, but I still have to know what it is that I'm working with. 
cross it out as you go until you get to be comfortable with it. And you know what I'm saying? Like if you have all of your stuff in this problem and it's just a whole bunch of numbers and words, then it's going to be easy to confuse yourself. Write your relationships. Who's married to who? There, these people are in a the relationship, these people are in a relationship, and this person is single, okay? So, hey, write your relationships, and then go for what you know. What am I looking for? What am I needing to cross out? That should help you. Devoy, you're doing med, class, med calc now. Okay, then. All right. I hope it's easy to you. What do you do when you get discouraged? I take a moment and throw something. No, I'm just kidding. That's not productive. I just take a moment and woosah, uh, like for real, just kind of, <laughs> and I pray about it. I think about the things that's going right, things that I'm doing, how can I change it? And then, you know, I just stay encouraged. I'm like, is this what I want? God, do you want this for me in my life? Show me, help me, you know? So those are some of the things I do, but you know, if this is what you want, you got to work hard for it. Nurse is not easy. If nursing was easy, everybody would be doing it and everybody would be doing it well. Kima. Oh, wow. Thank you. My teacher never taught us about military time. Yeah. 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 Cause okay. If you got mid, um, not midnight, midnight starts at zero, 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 or sometimes it's written at as 2,400. So you got one in the morning, you know, and then all the way till you get to 12 o'clock in the afternoon. So then you just keep adding the hours onto it. So one o'clock in the afternoon, one plus 12 is going to be 13. Two plus 12 is going to be 1,400. Three plus 12 is going to be 1,500. Just add the 1,200s to it. Yep. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> can this help with um unit com conversion for chemistry yeah you have um stoichiometry in chemistry absolutely absolutely all right what else i got what what, what? okay we done <laughs> all right so if this has been a help to you like i said Help me, help me help you, help me help you. A like, a, a share, a subscribe. Tell your friends, tell your foes, tell everybody. And we're on, well, I'm on Wednesdays and Sunday nights. Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Central. Sunday at um, 7.30 p.m. Central. The replay will be available in three, two, one. Okay, by YouTube. <laughs> so now boom it will be available so yeah and then there are also playlists with other um types of problems broken down if you would like um individual private tutoring or tutoring with your groups um abrn tutoring ableist rn tutoring that's me um is available um for you to take advantage of and yeah you guys now it's time now it is time for us to talk and chit chat so what's up? What you want to know? What you want to know? What you want to know? <laughs> Either about dosage count, nursing, um, nursing school, whatever. And you all are welcome. Thank you. She said, I'm a great teacher. Thank you. This is my first time on your live. How long have I been an RN? I have been an, R, um, an RN since 2020. I have been a nurse since 2010. I was an LPN first, and then I went to um, my so associates, and then I got my BSN as well. So I've been in nursing a whole almost 24 freaking long years. I mean, not 24, 14. Gila! I wish I would be a doggone nurse in, in 20, 24 years and being 35. Like, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> but no, it's been since um since 2010, so it'd be 14 years. Come March. You don't look a day over 30. Well, thank you, because I feel like it. <laughs> Any pointers on studying and helping to retain fundamentals? Okay, think. Think about nothing that you know, okay? Because you don't know anything. Um, you think that pain is a priority. You want to treat, you know, things with band-aids and ice and all that kind of stuff. But you have to completely retrain and think as a nurse. You're gonna learn the hows, the whys, the what, what we need to to look at first. The nursing process, the ad pie. You're gonna have to completely divulge yourself into another way of thinking, which is nursing okay um 
when you read your books, don't read them like a textbook. I mean, like a novel, you have to read them for what it's telling you, the, the, the basics, the, 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 the stuff, the, the charts, the alerts, the what's on the sides. You know what I'm saying? You can't read it like, and then he slowly touched my back. No, <laughs> it's not that type of deal because you don't have time to read all of that. I know people have started programs and they're like, we have to read 20 chapters before school even starts. And I'm just like, you can't read it like a novel. Mm -mm. No, it goes fast. So you really have to retrain your way of thinking. Um, your anatomy and your physiology, brush up on it. Because how are you going to take care of the body and you don't know the body? You know what I'm saying? Um, concept maps help. Um, you know, just d determine the way that you... Thank y'all for the roses. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. Oh my goodness. I didn't even see that. Thank you, thank you. Um, squirrel. <laughs> okay. What am I going to say? Um, determine what type of studying or learner you are. Um, and then get you some good resources. <clears throat> it's a lot of people that's on YouTube, a lot of people on TikTok. <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying? Just see what works best for you. Time management and don't get overwhelmed. Um, don't get overwhelmed. If you can get you a good planner and break this stuff down, look at your, your syllabus and your dates, you can most likely digest smaller pieces than big mountains of food, okay? Don't get overwhelmed and keep on top of your stuff and don't get behind, okay? Organization and time management. Um, I think I missed some things. B, BA is a different subject, but I work as a, a tech and every nurse I have asked has been so negative. Oh man, that sucks. Um, some people, you know, everybody need therapy after COVID. So you have to excuse some of us. Okay. <laughs> Just honestly. And then people be people. And you know what I'm saying? It's like, even with nurses, with, um, other personnel in the hospital and patients and family, you can count on a person to be a person. You know what I'm saying? You just got to pray for them and keep going. Don't let nobody change you. Don't let nobody change your mood, your attitude, your outlook. Don't nobody need control of you um, like that other than God, because he deserves all the praise and the glory. Don't no man on this earth who's walking need to have that much influence and control over your life. Okay. Boom. I missed most of it. When will it be next? Um, I'll be back on Sunday night, but you can catch the replay on my YouTube channel. A bless our in. Please like and subscribe. Thank you. Can this help with teas? I don't know what's on the teas. I didn't have to take the tea, so I'm not sure what's on there. Um, I have a tip for retention. Take one step forward and two steps back. <laughs> okay. I've been a nurse for 11 years. I like don't that don't read every word. Mm -mm, you can't read every word. AP one now. Okay. I love anatomy. I just went and watched one of your videos and I'm so excited to use your videos to study. Thank you. Tell your folks, tell your friends, girl. My videos are on um, YouTube. A blessed are in. They're sprinkled throughout the TikTok, but like I don't have enough followers yet <laughs> or views or whatever. So I can't create playlists on TikTok. And so, you know, just all, they're just inter, you know, sporadically placed. So that's why I got them on specific playlist on youtube and like i said i sound better now so i'm gonna add some more videos with like iv time and um what else i said i needed to do iv time and reconstitution and percent solution some more weight-based stuff you know so that you're looking for how to do a problem it's on that playlist um you know that's divided by the method of solving um don't study last minute thank you brie thank you Brie, are you still on here? Can you come on here? Let's see. Uh, 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 uh. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Let's see. Invite. I'm trying to see how I can invite. <gasps> Brie, I can invite you. Oh, shucks. Okay, so I'm about to invite Nurse Brie on. She is a DMP student as well um, as a nurse. She has her BSN now. Um, she's a travel nurse. She's, I think, in uh, ICU, cardiac ICU step down or something like that now. I'm not sure, but she can answer a lot of nurse questions too. Brie, are you on? I'm here. Can you hear me? I can hear you. <laughs> yes. So, I'm yeah. My head kind of hurts. I just got done studying. 
Okay, so what are you studying in school? Um, well, I'm in the DMC program, and I'm currently studying advanced pharmacology. Oh. And, yeah, that's what I've been studying. And then the DMP, or, yeah, the doctoral aspect is just like a class learning how to just study different programs and stuff. All right. Lantra. Hey, it's okay. You know, the replay is on. It's on YouTube. It's on the tube. <clears throat> Belle, thank you for this. I'm in the last classes applying for nursing program coming up in the fall. Yay, I'm excited for you. We have to remember the formula sheet. What's the best way to study that? I don't like formulas. That's why I like to mention the analysis. <laughs> oh my gosh. I don't like I don't like formulas. Um I, I don't know how to tell you how to, because, okay, that's one of the reasons, like I said, why I like dimensional analysis, because you don't have to memorize formulas, because if you memorize it and it's incorrect and like you don't put it the right way, then it's messed up. But as with dimensional analysis, all you gotta do is cross out your units on top and on bottom. You know what I'm saying? It's like a puzzle. You don't have to remember anything except for your metric conversions. So I think maybe flashcards, maybe that's the best thing I can tell you <laughs> for that. Um, I feel like my sister just joined your line. Hey, Anna. All right. I'm about to get an hour of study time in. All right, Kima. Happy studying. And I don't have family or parents needed that positive advice. Definitely. Yeah, we need nursing students. We need y'all. We need y'all. See you later, Kima. You have a blessed and wonderful week as well. Yeah, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. So, Bree, are you... Okay, you're about to go and travel, right? Can you hear me? I can hear you. I can hear you loud and clear. Yeah, I'm about to go and travel in about two more weeks. Gotcha. Okay, then. So are you excited about traveling? Like, even though it's like post COVID and you see a lot of people that say that, you know, travel nursing isn't like as fruitful as it once was. Yeah, I think I'm more excited because I'm traveling with my best friend. Okay. A best friend makes things good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what I meant. The metric conversion sheet, we have to remember. Oh, okay. So, like, for metric conversions, you got your base unit, which is one. So, the most that you really use in, like, problems are going to be the milligram, the microgram, and the kilogram. And if you can remember that the gram is one, that the milligram is 1,000, and then the milligram to the microgram is 1,000, and then back at grams... The gram to the kilogram is 1,000. You're good. They're all 1,000 apart. So that's all that you really, really need. You just have to remember which one is the big one and which one's the little one. Think micro. Micro is a little one. Um, You know, milli is your 1,000. So the milli, milli unit, milli equivalent, milligram, milli is 1,000. And then the kilogram is the, the, the biggest one because it's killing, it's killing them. It's a kilogram. It's killing them. Hey, <laughs> it's killing them. I don't know. I'm really silly. Um, So the way that I kind of <laughs> remember stuff in my head, I have to just break it down like that. Yeah. So here we are. Anybody have any more nurse questions? Do, 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 do. If um, <clears throat> I know a lot of people. Oh, I got a credit limit. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> I was looking at that. But yeah, um, I mean, I know people like, do you do anatomy, physiology? No, I do not. Do you do fundamentals? No, I do not. But Brie does. So if y'all would like her information, she, she can put it in the chat. Um, where can I look online to see if we are getting paid fairly? Once you find out, you let me know. <laughs> I think it's different um, compared to the different regions that you're in and um, the years of experience and as well as your specialty. Um, are we ever going to get paid fairly? I really, I really seriously freaking doubt it. <laughs> I mean, the, the work, I mean, okay, we save lives like daily. You know what I'm saying? 
you but you know 39 40 45 50 60 you know what i'm saying depending on where you live it's like why can't we be millionaires we save lives we're not throwing the balls but no shade whatever okay all right anyway advice on feeling like it's too late or confidence i'm 25 and girl you are 25 you have your whole life in like in front of you. There are people in school who are like 50. Not that 50 is old because we have people live until they're 100, right? <laughs> I had this guy who, who was 90 years old. He looked every bit of like 50. And I was like, are you sure you're 90? He said, yeah, I think so. I said, okay, then. I was trying to make sure I was in the right room. But there is never too long. As long as you got breath in your body. And you got the the faculties of your limbs. Go for it, go for it. Don't let these people on here or Facebook or wherever you know you see all of these people. They're doing this, 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 this. But they don't tell you the the story behind it. Okay, like um, when I was, I got okay. So twenty ten is when I got my LPN, and then I went back for my RN in twenty twenty. So in 2010, I became a nurse, 2010, I became a nurse and I was what, 22 years old. And then I got my RN when I was what, 32. So, I mean, and then here I am now, BSN, been a nurse for however many years. I've got my transport company. I tutor students like the sky is your limit. Nobody's time is, is a, a status quo. You know what I'm saying? You got to go on your own time and your own terms. So if that's what you want to do, do it. That's all I got to say about that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you go from a minimal to a teaspoon? I don't know what the minimal is. Is a milliliter? That's what you're trying to ask? Her, if it helps, I'm 25. You 25, Bree? Yes. I feel so old now. You you called me old the other day. I don't recall. I remember that. After I helped you with your dosage cap problem, too. You called me old. I said, God doggy, the old lady is helping the young lady with dosage calculations. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> yes. So... Yeah, do you think it's better to go for LPN to work in an office or a hospital, JoJo? Um, mm. I feel like it depends on what you want to do. Yeah, like, do you want to be in a hospital? It's chaotic, or do you want to be in an office setting? What so, for and then it also depends. Because, okay, I went, okay, like I said, I was LPN. I was LPN for a substantial amount of time. I did long-term care. I did home health. I did school nursing. I did rehab. Um, do, 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 home health. Do, 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 do. Okay, um, I'm trying to think of all the stuff I did. Okay, anywho. So, but in that in those settings, that was fine because in your nursing homes, LPN is the charge nurse. But then you have an RN unit manager. But then there's some, there's some things that you can do and there's some things that you can't do. So, it depends on what it is that you want to do and the scope of practice where you live at, okay? So, LPN is always going to be limited by the scope of practice of an LPN. The RN can always delegate to the LPN because the LPN can't do as much as the RN. So just think, okay, do I want to be limited by, you know, these things or am I okay with being in these settings and not being able to do the things that my board of nursing is allowing me to do? So you just have to look at it like that. Don't look at the money because the LPNs, I know some LPNs that live good. They travel during their um, COVID too, okay? So it just look at the, the scope of practice and what it is that you want to do. So me, I was like, I want to do more. Um, you know, it's saying that I have to have an RN license to do this. I have to have that uh, RN license to do that. And I said, I want to do that. So therefore I went back and then I got my, my associates and my BSN. So there's nothing wrong with being LPN. It just depends on what it is that you want and you see yourself doing in your nursing career. Yup. 
she said we the same age and she want to go back for nursing that's so sweet what made you want to go take care of folks that makes a lot of sense cool cool and um i'm glad that made some sense because um i think what i did not know um <laughs> when i started nursing okay so i started out of university Bree, did you did it did you know this story Bree? I think you told me. Okay, so I started at a university. I did my prerequisites. Um, Bree and I, we we graduated from the same university. She did the um the traditional BSN program. I did the bridge program from ADN to BSN. But the same school that we graduated from, I also started there. And then I went to a community college and just switched over to the LPN program. So long story short, I met my now husband at a little boosted concert. We, <laughs> that's why Boosie will always have a place in my heart. I love Boosie because that's where I met my boo thing. And so <laughs> he then went to the military and I, you know, we got engaged or whatever. And I was like, okay, I was a pharmacy technician. And I was like, I really need to finish up, you know, my program of study or have my nursing degree before I move out of state with somebody. And so what I did was I just went on ahead and I switched over to the LP and program because I saw that it was a quicker way to get my nursing license okay so that was fine but i didn't know about the scope of practice i didn't even know the difference between the community college versus the university versus associates um, versus like a bachelor's i just knew that it was like three semesters and then i could have a nursing license boom so i was like hey but long story short so we ain't get married then <laughs> <laughs> he went on to the military. I stayed here. I got my LPN. I married my ex husband. I was married for five years. I mean, and then I divorced, and then okay, he divorced and all that stuff, and then we got married. Okay, so long story short, I changed my plan because of what I had going on in life, but I didn't know the difference between LPN. I didn't know the difference between RN. I didn't know the difference between associates and BSN. So that's why I went there. But like once I was at LPN, of course, I love being with the old people. I love doing the rehab, but it was like I, I couldn't do this with an IV. I couldn't do this with a pick line. I couldn't um do a first assessment. And then like it's some really cruel people out there who feel like LPNs aren't nurses and they're like when you gonna be a real nurse i'm like jigaboo what you mean i sat down and took an in class don't you see this in in my name like lpn you know what i'm saying so i just say that to say know and research what it is that you're getting into um and i think we need to make more information and resources available for those who are looking in to um a nursing program um, you mean like those versus, um, trying to decide, well, if I go to a community college, am I going to be fired? Heck no. They're not going to look, they're not even looking at transcripts for all I know. You can pass them little onboarding tests and you've got a, a license and basically in <laughs> some places if you just a warm body, cause I'd be like, how in the heck are you a nurse? But no shade. Anywho, then you've got a job. I mean, Bree, you laughing, you're laughing. But come on now, you just had a situation. No comment. Okay. Okay, then. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, I think that's really important to look into before you, you know, you make decisions like that. <clears throat> yes, def definitely. They look down on LPNs. They do. They do. They sure do. But um, my end goal won't even hire RNs. Well, what is your end goal? Okay. Naturopathic man asks what that is. I was I was gonna Google it, but okay then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, my night is okay, Montra. Right now, my brain is fried, so I'm kind of just um yeah resting for a second. Then I get back to studying. Mm -mm. You had no, you had to work today. It's natural medicine. Okay. <laughs> you so silly. I'm trying to figure like natural 
I was like, okay, let's take the root word and then we'll, okay. <laughs> like I said, I don't show enough in the Google it, but hey, I guess it don't hurt to ask. All righty. Um, I don't know. Anybody else get any more? Quick? I want to start with hospice. You can have that too, baby. Uh-uh. Folks, I don't like how I don't like when folks die. Like I know that people have to die because it's part of a life of the life cycle. But like when my patients, they be like, "Oh, you got this person. They on hospice. They a DNR. They on atropine and morphine and all this stuff." I'm like, I mean, not atropine. Um, what's the the drops? Yeah, atropine that you put under their tongue so that it it dries up the secretions. And ain't that it? Yeah. Okay, then. So, uh, in the scopolamine patch, you know, so that, you know, they won't be all juicy and stuff and, you know, choking on secretions. And I'll be like, oh my gosh, please don't let this person die tonight. Like, I've had a bad experience with postmortem care and my little scary butt, like, <laughs> I can't go in there by myself. Cause, like, you know how, like, they still twitch and move because everything isn't dead, dead. I don't like that. Like, I watched too much scary stuff as a little kid and now I'm just, I'm traumatized, so I can't do, I can't do post-mortem care by myself. Mm. I didn't have a problem with it. I talked to the patient. You talked to them. What did they talk back, Bree? What did they say? No. <laughs> I'm finna go. <laughs> but then, like, I don't know. It just, I don't know. It it kind of, I don't know. I don't, I don't like when my patients die on me. I like them to be live and well or sleep. Because we work at night. Sleep is good too, but not too sleep. Like, not dead sleep, but like sleep, sleep. And wake up, take your medicine, and go back to sleep, you know? Which is the best way to go about getting in nursing school after I get my BSW? Is that bachelor's of social work? We're in Alabama. Alabama. Even after you get your bachelor's, if your school has like a accelerated program, you could do that. Yeah. Very fast. Yeah. Because, I mean, they have bachelor's to such and such program. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sure do, sure do. I have a bachelor's in CJ, and I'm doing an accelerated. Okay, I'm going to go back. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go back to Google. What's CJ? <laughs> Oh, cruel just boom look baby it's late it's late i'm telling you i've got i've been out in these streets having to renew all these business licenses and i'm trying to get you know get more contracts with my 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 van business my my medical transport so yeah um it's a big problem with like um discharges and and getting the people to where they need to go so here I am taking people in a wheelchair van on the side <laughs> and taking care of folks. So, yeah, 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 yeah. So, I'm tired. I was tired. Criminal justice. I guess that would be CJ. You know what? Y'all just too smart for me. You know, No, I have an excuse. I don't sit here and I don't give y'all the best hour and a half of dosage calc that I could give. I deserve a pass. <laughs> I deserve a pass with all of this math that I don't slung around here tonight. I think I deserve a pass. Yes, and the business and owner, yeah. Anatomy, uh, biology, uh, some of the nursing courses like patho, fundamentals, med surge, and farm. So yeah, I'm on the other side of this math because I bet I can't do it. I have to call her. Math is I, math is math. Like it's math. It's numbers. It's words. You just lining up you stuff. If if you, if, you, why. you can do it, but you can't tell me why. I yeah, can do it too. I can't tell you why. I love you math. I, <laughs> she said you are telling us. Well, I mean, hmm, I'm okay. So so I'm gonna really tell my age. So when I was a little kid, we used to have like the paper encyclopedias. 
like what's it called world book and so you know my dad was in the navy so i think we were across the sea and they had like a big sale on them and so they bought the whole encyclopedia and like i used to sit there and read the encyclopedias yeah i was a little i was a little nerd and so then i was like on the math part and i was like i'm gonna make up my own math yeah ask me how that went <laughs> <laughs> ask me how that went but it's like i i don't i'm only good to like a certain point in math like don't put that calculus in oh statistics and physics mm -mm. nope 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 that's okay but all this other stuff i'm good huh i love physics i don't have a problem with see i don't have a problem with math i can't tell i can't tell you why i got the answer it's physics if it's going this way and going that way, what time is going to do this? No, no, thank you. No, thank you. No, gracias. Thank y'all. Mm -mm. But yeah, y'all stay encouraged. Nursing school is a drop in the bucket of your nursing career. You're going to be looking back and like, what school? You done. You know what I'm saying? You're going to be sitting up here on Vivian and Google. What's it called? Indeed. Like, these folks in here tripping. Where I'm going to? <laughs> you be like, I ain't got to sit here and take this. You be sitting up there on the, the doggone company computer on Indeed. That's how fed up you are. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I made it to course three, med surge. Yay. Congratulations. I'm so excited okay nervous is acceptable we don't say scared so you said nervous you stay <laughs> it's gonna be okay med surge it's like the basis for nursing i think everything goes back to the hemodynamics um acid base the blood and oxygen and homeostasis would you say that yeah pretty much pretty much everything gonna require some fluid oh give them a bolus like why are they getting a bolus why are they doing this? Why are you doing it? The blood. What is the blood pressure doing? What is the heart doing? What is the lungs doing? What the oxygen look like? That's exactly what doggone the, the meat and taters of nursing is, is maintaining those, those things. So, um, a, look back at your anatomy, look back at your physiology, the main three organs, um, that is really, really, really going to be on and popping in 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 med surge is the of course the vitals your heart your lungs and your kidneys all those are in a threesome and they do a very delicate dance and when one is off they try to compensate to make the other one act right yep anybody else have any more questions about studying about nursing about anything that we've said tonight any um suggestions or recommendations for sunday requests because <clears throat> i don't know provider huh questions for me so who some provider questions for me i'm gonna send you some actually i'm gonna look at the assignment tonight and i'm gonna send you some <sighs> the provider <laughs> oh man mm -mm -mm. the provider i'm like you are the provider reconstitution and heparin okay well how would i say it more so of like like which doses i guess is safer to give safe to dose yeah okay so, so she said reconstitution and I think my whole life is just sticky notes right now. I got so many sticky notes. It's ridiculous. <clears throat> okay. Reconstitution and heparin and safe dose and GTT or well, IV rates. <laughs> Excuse me. Both of them. And I guess infusion time too. I think they had requested that one earlier. And the percent solution. <laughs> it's like, do more of this one. I was like, I only got that one. My bad. <laughs> I got your drops per minute, your milliliters per hour. Navy Vet 88, what you doing? <laughs> Creeping on here. You know who that is. You know who that is. Oh, hi. <laughs> Does Bree go live on anything? Bree, do you go live on anything? Access 
go live on here. I think, well, I've been going live on my Instagram and Facebook, but yeah, I don't have access to live on TikTok. I think you gotta have a thousand followers. I was about to say, you on here now, you should. Um, on here, I'm only, yeah, I'm only able to go live when you invite me, but to go live on my own, I think I need a thousand followers, my friend said. Mm. Okay, then. Because I'm not even allowed on here to, yeah, it says you'll connect using audio only, so mm-hmm. I'm not even allowed to turn my camera on. Mm-hmm. Okay, then. Oh, well, go off, being sis. On Instagram, my Instagram is not popping at all. I post there and Facebook. Like Facebook recently had like a little spike, but I mean, I don't know. My TikTok is where I'm usually at. I don't know. I stopped um streaming to the Facebook because it never would do right. It would pause and the audio was messed up. So I said, I'm just gonna put it on YouTube. So then, therefore, you can see the replays. You can have the little playlist, and then you know, boom, nursing students dream. Chef's kiss. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah, y'all. Um, this has been a cool session. I'm glad to meet new faces and to see old people who have been coming back on. I don't know. I'm gonna have like kiss the shelf. Who the shelf, baby? Who's the shelf, baby? <laughs> All right, I ain't finna cut up with you. But um, I it was it's cool to see the people who've been here. And it's like, I want everybody to pass and continue on. But then it's like, once you graduate, y'all not going to come back. And I'll be like, oh, <laughs> we're such and such. We're such and such. But hey, maybe we'll work together one day. All right. So anybody has anything else? Speak now for have a hold your peace. Nope. Nope. Well, I'm going to pray us out like I always do. Um, all hearts and minds composed, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you. I just praise you. I lift you up. I thank you for just being you. Thank you for life, health, and strength. Thank you for this live session. Thank you for all these nursing students, these nurses, these uh, pharmacy technicians, respiratory therapists, doctors, whoever have come on here. Lord, I pray that this live has touched the lives of many, Lord. Their hearts, minds, and souls be changed forever, Lord. I pray that my that your glory has shone through me and that um, your glory will be present forever in the lives of those who are being taken care of by these future nurses. Let them go on and graduate and take care of them to the best of their abilities with their confidence and let them be prudent and let them be thorough and caring and kind. Um, God, I ask that you just um, cover them as they go through nursing school. Anybody who has tests this week, I pray that you would take in away their anxiety and their fear and instill in them courage and endurance, Lord, and confidence. Um, pray that their families be blessed and covered, their children, their houses, vehicles, refrigerators, bank accounts, all of that just be covered and carried through the end of school. Meet all of their needs, God. We pray um, and thank you for all that you have done, what you have done in the past, what you're doing now, and what you will do in the future. I thank you for the blood of Jesus, Lord, that washed us clean, white as snow, that advocates for us on the throne of grace, God. Thank you, Jesus, for being a friend and a comforter and a provider in times of darkness and sorrow, God. I just thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I lift you up. It is in your holy name that I pray these and other blessings. Amen. All right. So, y'all have a good night. I will see you Sunday night. Sunday night. Sunday night, oh, 7 30. You got work Sunday night. When when are you doing another Zoom, Bree? You hadn't done a Zoom. What what's going on? I'm tired. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you have a reason to be tired. You are a hardworking nurse and tutor and instructor and um student. So you get a pass. Thank you for the prayer it was needed. Yes, thank you. Thank you for being here, JoJo. You have a good night. All right, Miss Bree Bree. I'll talk to you later. And the rest of you guys, y'all have a good week. And I'll see you Sunday night. Y'all have a be um good evening. Be blessed. See you later. Bye.